Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a skin cream geared towards anti-aging. And I'm really excited to be sharing this with you today because I've come up with a formula that has really unique skin benefits and really unique and awesome ingredients. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my process and I'm also gonna be talking to you about the ingredients and why I've chosen those things to go into the cream. Um, on my Patreon page, I will be sharing with you the entire written tutorial and the recipe. So come along with me and I'll share with you how to make this beautiful anti-aging facial cream. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start weighing out my ingredients for the heated phase. So when you make a cream or a lotion, there is a heated phase and a cool down phase. And what that means is there are some ingredients that need to be melted down and get warm and some ingredients that you do not need to melt down or you do not want them to getting too warm. So we're gonna be getting our ingredients ready for the heated phase now. So I've already weighed out my distilled water. To this, I need to add my glycerin. So here's my glycerin. I'm gonna go ahead and add it directly to my water. Okay, and then I'm gonna set that aside. In this little beaker, I'm gonna be combining <clears throat> emulsifying wax. Emulsifying wax is what combines the oil and the water. Without emulsifying wax, your oils and your waters will not combine and they'll separate. So we definitely want to add that in. I'm not using any type of special emulsifying wax. I'm just using a plain old um, generic e-wax and you can get that at any soap um, or cosmetic supply store. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh that out now. Okay, while I'm weighing out the e-wax, I think it's really important to also let you know that the whole entire area where I'm working has been cleaned with a 5% bleach and water solution, disinfected. Creams and lotions um, can grow bacteria super easily because of the combination of oil and water, somewhere in the range of 30 minutes within making your product. Um, so it's very, very, important that you clean and sanitize everything that's going to be going touching the lotion and the product including utensils including your stick blender and all of your dishes containers that you're going to be storing in the, the containers that you're going to be storing your cream in also need to be disinfected okay the next thing i'm going to be adding to this e-wax is some cetyl alcohol now, acetyl alcohol is a thickening agent, so this is gonna create a nice, thick cream. Um, the reason I'm using acetyl alcohol instead of stearic acid is because acetyl alcohol um, has a very good skin feel to it. It glides onto the skin very easily, and it doesn't leave like a white, like soapy residue that you see sometimes when you rub lotion in. It just rubs right in, um, smoothly, it doesn't leave any residue, and it feels non-greasy, which is really nice when you're using a skin cream. It has no drag to it. So this is a really good thing to have when you're making facial creams. Acetyl alcohol in place of steric. And if you're making a lighter cream like I am, you would use acetyl alcohol in place of butters, like in place of your shea butter um, or cocoa butter. So we're gonna go ahead and add the e-wax, or we're gonna go ahead and add the acetyl alcohol directly to the e-wax. Okay. Okay, now to the e-wax and the acetyl alcohol, I am gonna be adding in some meadow foam seed oil which I have already um, put into a little beaker and weighed out. I'm gonna be adding it to this because we're also gonna be warming up this oil in the heated phase. So the reason I'm using Meadow Foam Seed Oil here, it is a quite luxurious, expensive oil. You certainly do not have to use um, this oil, but uh, you could substitute it with something like rice bran oil, 
or a sweet almond oil. They both have really good antioxidant properties are, and are pretty inexpensive. Um, or even grapeseed oil um, has some good antioxidant properties. But the reason I'm using um, meadow foam seed oil is because it's known for its um, skin softening and moisturizing benefits. And it's known to have some anti-aging benefits. And also it's considered a dry oil. And so I've developed this cream to go underneath of your sunscreen and underneath of your makeup. Um, so I like it to soak right in. And this one is drier to the touch than a lot of other oils. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it right into there. Okay. Now I have my water, my glycerin mixture off to the side and I'm gonna go ahead and put my e-wax, my acetyl alcohol, my meadow foam seed oil off to the side and then I'm gonna weigh out the ingredients that are gonna go into the cool down phase of my cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. Now these ingredients that I'm gonna be showing you I'm really excited about and I'm really liking the way they're making my skin feel. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh them out and set them aside and then we will add these ingredients in to the cool down phase. So the first thing I'm gonna to add to this little beaker here is some cyclomethicone. Cyclomethicone is an ingredient that is clear in nature. It's like almost water-like, but it's used to help with the feel and the spreadability of your lotions and creams. Um, it helps to moisturize also without a greasy feeling and it just really has a nice glide to it. So it's a nice thing to have when you're adding it to your facial creams or even just your body lotions. It's an inexpensive ingredient. So to this, I'm going to be adding in a really nice ingredient called phytobiotics acai berry. Phytobiotics acai berry, this is really exciting because to me, um, plant-based ingredients are important and this is a plant-derived stem cell ingredient and it's designed to impart antioxidant protectant and anti-aging benefits to your skin and it enhances cellular metabolism. So what that means is it's going to have a, an effect on your skin where it turns your cells over quicker. Um, so that's why it helps with anti-aging and it's got a lot of really potent um, benefits, anti-aging benefits. So it is a plant-derived stem cell ingredient. Really exciting. This is a quite expensive ingredient, um, I will tell you. It's a splurge if you're buying it. Just know that it's a nice, unique ingredient and if you're selling the products that you are making, um, it does impart some good label appeal. So, um, you know, it's a good thing to have in your products for different reasons, it's a really good high quality anti-aging ingredient to have to your to add to your skin line but also it has label appeal so people will find that um, a unique quality okay now to the acai stem cells and the cyclomethicone i'm going to be adding in an ingredient called tripeptide 5. tripeptide 5 is uh, an ingredient that is kind of hard to explain um, i'm not going to go into all the science behind it you can definitely look it up if you want but it's a highly bioactive, deeply skin penetrating peptide. Um, and it has been found in studies to activate tissue growth. And it has no, so you would use this in place of like a, a collagen or it's supposed to help stimulate the collagen in the skin. Um, and you can look up, you know, how much peptide content is in the different type of peptides that you buy. This, is, this one is dissolved in glycerin 
and it's preservative free and it's a clear liquid and it's water soluble. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it right to my cool down phase. So this is um, you know, something you would use to help your skin look plumper uh, and you store this in the fridge actually. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our tripeptide five. This is also a very expensive, luxurious ingredient. Um, but again, we're making a nice anti-aging cream. So it's gonna have label appeal and it's also gonna be very good for your skin. And I got this ingredient from uh, Making Cosmetics. And I'll put the links to where I got all of these awesome ingredients in the description box below. So if you're interested in buying them, you can certainly check them out. Okay, now to this, I'm also gonna be adding in my preservative. I'm using Optifin as my preservative here. You need to add a preservative to all of your creams that contain oil and water mixture. Super, super important. You do not want your cream to go bad in a few days, and that's what will happen if you don't add a preservative. So I'm opting for a paraben-free preservative, and that is called Optifin. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up and I probably will remix it before we get started um, or before I add this to the oil and water mixture. But I actually forgot, I do wanna add in my fragrance to the cool down phase as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm doing for fragrance. Um, totally up to you. Uh, I'm gonna be using a mixture of um, fragrance oil and essential oil here. So I really, really like the combination of lavender and vanilla, and I find it an especially good combination around the face. Um, both of those, well, lavender is very good for the, if you're using vanilla absolute, you know, that's a pure vanilla alcohol, um, but I'm actually gonna be using the fragrance oil And you could leave out fragrance oil if you're sensitive to that on your face, um, but I'm only adding this in in a very small percentage, and we're gonna be doing 50% of that as lavender, and 50% of the um, mixture as vanilla. You could leave out the fragrance oil. And just have essential oil or you could leave it out completely. And just have an unscented cream. Okay, you can see this is a tiny, tiny bit I'm adding. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right into my cool down face. So that way I have it all together. And I'm gonna give it a little mix. Okay, I'm gonna move that off to the side. It smells really good. Okay, 
Okay, so then I'm just gonna go ahead and heat up my water and my glycerin, my e-wax, my acetyl alcohol, and my meadow foam seed oil over a double boiler. And once this is all melted down, uh, I will bring you right back to show you how we're gonna. Okay, here's my oil mixture my and my water and my glycerin. I went ahead and I moved my oil, acetyl alcohol, and metal foam seed oil mixture into this container because you do need to add the um, water into the oil and the other container was a little too small. So here is my immersion blender, which has been all sterilized. And we're just gonna start to slowly add the water glycerin uh, mixture to this and start blending right away. And you can see it is already turning into a lotion. And we're just gonna blend that for a few minutes and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I've been blending this for two minutes. I just wanted to bring you back and let you show, show you what it looks like. And we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then we're gonna come back and blend some more. Okay, I've let that sit for about four more minutes and now I'm gonna be blending it up a little bit more. You can see it's turning into a really nice consistency. I'm gonna blend that up for another minute or two and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I went ahead and blended this for another two minutes or so, and I just took the temperature on it, and it's sitting at 110 degrees, which is still a little bit too warm to be adding in um, the ingredients from my cool down phase. So we'll come back when it's ready to go ahead and add in the cool down phase. Okay, we're sitting at around 100 degrees, and now we're ready to go ahead and add in that cool down phase. You can see how nice and uh, thick this came up. When we add in the cool down phase, it is gonna get a bit looser right off the bat, um, just because we're adding in some liquid. But um, as it sets up, um, it will get to like a medium thick or thick consistency, not as thick as it is right now, because we are adding in um, quite a bit of liquid to this mixture. So this is our cyclomethicone, acai stem cells, tripeptide 5, an optifin, and our fragrance. Okay, now we're just gonna go ahead and give this a good blend. I'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of this lotion off the blender here and then we're going to fill um, a little piping bag I'm going to show you which containers I'm using here and why I'm using a piping bag in just a second okay so it still is pretty warm um, to the touch we're sitting right around a little less than 100 degrees now, about 98. So this will continue to cool, and as it cools, it's gonna continue to, this is a pretty good consistency here, but it is gonna continue to get even thicker in consistency. So after you bottle this, let it sit for overnight so you can see let it sit for the day and then overnight so you can see what the consistency looks like. Um, it's a really good, what I like about this is that it is, it has a thick consistency, but it's light and weight when it goes onto your skin. It's super lightweight. All right, we're ready to go ahead and bottle this. So um, I'm using these cute little one ounce containers from Nature's Garden and I've gone ahead and put my mixture into a piping bag. Um, 
if your cream starts to separate after you add in your cool down face, just give it a few more minutes and keep, um, keep blending it. Just need to make sure everything is nice and emulsified. All right. And I'm just filling it to the top. Okay, everybody, there you have it. That is how you make the beautiful day cream. I have not yet named it, so I'm going to go ahead and bring you right back when I'm putting the label on it and show you what I've called it. Hi, everybody. I'm back to show you how I've labeled and packaged these little day creams. So I went ahead and decided to call this cream Timeless Day Cream, and all my ingredients are listed down in descending order on the package. I got these little labels from onlinelabels.com. They are made for a laser printer and they are um, clear. So I'll go ahead and put a link to where I purchased these labels and where I purchased all of the ingredients for this day cream. Um, I've been using it and testing it. I really like it. I think you're really gonna like it. And they're now available on my website or you can purchase the recipe on Patreon and make it yourself. If you like this video, please remember to give me a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Catch you on the next video.